We're back with former FDA commissioner and Pfizer board member, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. So Dr. Gottlieb, uh, the World Health Organization has labeled MPOX a public health emergency of international concern since it's spreading in a number of countries in Africa right now. How at risk are Americans? Not at risk right now. I, there is concern that this could start to spread in the U.S. and in other countries. We've seen isolated cases in other countries. What's spreading right now is a different variant than what spread in 2022 and caused that epidemic and caused upwards of almost 100,000 cases here in the U.S. That was what we call clade 2, which is endemic to Western Africa. What's spreading right now is a different variant called clade 1, which is actually potentially more dangerous. Most of the cases right now are isolated in the DRC in the Congo. Um, a lot of the cases are in children under the age of five. About 50 percent of the cases are in children under the age of five. And a lot of the deaths, has been 500 deaths, are also clustered in younger children. What has people um, particularly concerned is there's a new variant of this clade 1 called 1B that appears to spread a little bit more easily and maybe is potentially more dangerous. We don't know a lot about it. And because there's not a lot of confirmatory testing in Africa right now, we don't really know for sure what's spreading in the DRC. The WHO and others assume it's the old variant, uh, because that's what his, has historically spread there. But there could be more 1B mixed in with that than what we know right now. And that variant does have potentially more pandemic potential. Why are children so impacted? They're vulnerable to the infection, first of all, and a lot of the spread that we're seeing in the DRC is from close contact. So it's not necessarily sexual spread, which what we've seen historically, but it's kids in households, kids in crowded refugee camps, kids in healthcare facilities who are getting it from close contact. That's the presumption right now. And children just are more vulnerable generally to this virus. So in 2022, when we had that outbreak of MPOX here in the United States, there was also a problem with a lack of available vaccine. If someone was vaccinated back then, does it work against this new strain? Uh, it does. I mean, that's the presumption. People believe that people who were previously vaccinated will have protection from this current strain who got fully vaccinated. Also, people who were previously infected should be protected. And 1.3 million Americans did go out and get vaccinated. So there is a large reservoir of people in the U.S. who should have protection, particularly in the communities where this was spreading previously. If this does get back in the U.S., though, there's no reason to believe it necessarily is going to spread the same way within the same community that has spread before. It's we're spreading primarily in gay and bisexual men. There's no reason to believe that would be the case. What you worry about with a strain that may be more contagious through casual contact is that it can get into institutional settings, nursing homes, hospitals, other places where people are in close contact with one another, mm -hmm. and it can spread within those facilities where there might be vulnerable people. So that's one of the concerns around this new 1B variant. If if it does start to spread here. How long before international agencies are able to get a handle on this? I know the State Department was looking at trying to help. I think it's going to be a while because it's hard to get resources into that region. It's hard to get vaccines in. Vaccine supply isn't necessarily an issue anymore. The primary manufacturer, Bavarian Nordic, does have a lot of vaccine they're manufacturing. They said they can make upwards of 10 million doses. By 2025, they can get 2 million doses available to Africa this year. It's been a problem getting vaccines into that region, including that the WHO hasn't authorized the vaccines for use in parts of Africa. So that's block people from being able to distribute it. So I think it's going to be a while before we get a handle on what's going on in Africa. A lot of people are being put at risk there. A lot of people are dying from the infection. The longer it spreads within Africa, the greater the risk that it starts to spread in other countries as well. So here in the U.S., as kids get ready to go back to school, people go back to the office, what should they be anticipating and planning for in the fall and winter when it comes to the risk from, from other viruses? Yeah, I think the, the primary concern for the fall and winter is the concerns we've always had. Flu, RSV, COVID, we will see upticks of these infections. I think there's also growing concern around infections we've long vanquished, like measles, for example. There's been 230 cases of measles so far this year. Last year, there were only about 60 cases overall. We've seen about 10,000 cases of pertussis in the U.S. That's in part a function of declining vaccination rates for those infections, particularly measles. So that's going to be a concern. We're going to see outbreaks of those infections, which we haven't heard about in a very long time. A real-world impact from the anti-vaccine movement, in other words. A world impact from people, from vaccine skepticism, um, people, you know, being more skeptical about getting vaccines. If you look at some of the polling data, their rate of 
vaccination we need for measles, for example, is about 95 percent. We're about 93 percent right now. Um, and in pockets of the U.S., vaccination rates for measles are far lower than that. We've fallen well below the herd immunity threshold. The CDC has been making a big push. Mandy Cohen, the CDC director, has been going out to communities to try to encourage vaccination. I think that's going to be a long effort to try to change people's minds after some of the backlash we've seen, particularly to the vaccine mandates, which I think have turned people against vaccination more generally. Dr. Gottlieb, always good to talk to you. Thanks a lot.